Since June 2022, every new build home in the UK must have a charge point installed. And it's a fantastic way of promoting EV use because once you've got a charge point, it's kind of a no-brainer really to get an EV. One such development is this one in Arundel in West Sussex. And I'm at the home of John Kelly. He's got a charge point, but he doesn't want it. He wants to change it for another one. So let's talk to John, hopefully out of the rain, and we'll find out why he wants to change this charge point. We yeah. could talk about it as the future, but it's not. It's the here and now. Yeah. And uh, it's only dinosaurs like me that are slow to sort of accept it. So at the moment, you've got a Rolex charge point. Mm -hmm. What's wrong with it? Nothing. OK. <laughs> it's just that a neighbour of mine has got a similar one. And when he bought his new car, uh, the charger didn't work from day one. Oh, so right. it was out of its three year warranty. So they've had a replacement and a more new, newer model. Okay. And so I thought, well, I don't want to go through that same process. So I'll go for a newer model as well. Of course. And when we were, when we were talking before, John said, ah, oh, the, the charge point's in the garage at the moment, uh, which was a strange location, he thought. Exactly. Yeah. Now I, I was thinking, well, some people park in a garage, so that's fine, but actually you can't park in here, can you? Well, when we bought the house, it was a full-size garage, but we've made it now more usable oh, in terms right. of general storage. One of the wonderful things about this charger is it's got an 8.5 metre length of cable. Is it that has, right? yes. Yes. So I can go and park over there if I want to. <laughs> yes, exactly. This is Darren. He's the installer for Anderson. And what's the first thing you have to do? Well, the first thing we have to do is we have to run some tests first uh, on the property of the electrical supply. Um, it's just called inspection and testing, so everything has to be visually inspected and tested to make sure it's up to code and compliant with a car charger. Okay. Uh, this particular property is a new build, so it already has a car charger and we're going to upgrade it today. Uh, so the first thing I had to do was look at the protection, the switch gear for the protection for the car charger to make sure that's compliant. It's not. So I had to do a quick upgrade. So car chargers have to have what's called overcurrent protection and RCD protection. We quite often will install what's called an RCBO, which is both of those things in one. But they have to be double pole. And the existing RCBO in the board for the car charger was this one, which is a single pole RCBO. So I had to just quickly do a little upgrade and swap it out for a double pole version. So it's now compliant with the regulations for car chargers. So this uh, current one was uh, installed when the house was being built and we're gonna upgrade this to an Anderson unit and we're gonna move it to the other side of this wall because as you can see, the customer can't bring the car in here anyway. So we're gonna take that off and drill a new hole to the other side of the wall and put the new Anderson charger on this side. I'm gonna grab some tools out of the car first and then I can get started. It wrapped like a Christmas present. We have a car charger. So most of the time you've got to run the cabling and all that sort of stuff and this is relatively simple I guess isn't it? Yeah so it's simple enough because the cable's already here because it's a new build um, but obviously we want to put it on the other side of the wall so once I've got this charger off the wall my next step is to get the best option to get the cable through the wall with the least cosmetic disruption, really. What other things did you like about this Anderson charger when you were looking? It just seemed to come out sort of with five styles on every report that I read. This old Rolex charger doesn't support smart tariffs, and that's one of the reasons that John wanted to swap this for a more modern charger like the Anderson. Great, well, let's get cracking. Right. OK, so I've got to take this cable through to outside um, and I don't really want to have to take big chunks of the plasterboard out. So I might just drill a new hole through to outside to put the charger on the other side of the wall. And then just to cover this up, I'll put a little box there. So the connections will be with inside the box. So there's no cables or big holes in the plasterboard there. Then I went through at an angle to make sure that the charger isn't too close to the drainage pipe. So I've gone slightly that way with it. So this is the internals of the charger. And we've got availability for bottom entry for the cable to come at the bottom. And we've got availability for the cable to come through the back so there's no cable showing. In this particular one we're going to take the cable straight through the wall. So we're going to have the cable come straight into it. 
So I'm just gonna make some adjustments. So when did you move into the house? Four years ago. Four years, okay. And was it unusual at that point having a charge point already on the house? Because I know charge point regulations came in and it meant that in, was it 2022, June 2022, they all had to, didn't yes. they, new builds? Yes. Um, so it, it was quite unusual, was it, this one had it? Well, I think the developer was trying to get ahead of the game, fitting not only a charger in the house, but also an air source heat pump, for which I think they get sort of brownie points. No, it was there and you thought, well, you know, I didn't have any intentions of buying an EV car at that time. But then you think, well, if the charger's there, it would be yeah. rude not to. Yeah, it's funny actually, because our old house um, in Canterbury, the couple that I sold it to, absolutely lovely. And when I was showing them around the house, I said, oh, you know, we've got the charger and they weren't that interested. And then I saw them a couple of months ago, lovely EV <laughs> outside and they absolutely love it. Right. They said, oh, we don't have to go to petrol stations anymore. It's wonderful. And I think it really helps having a, a charger already on a house because I think it just feels like a no-brainer almost right. to get an EV right. after you've got that. We yeah. could talk about it as the future, but it's not. It's the here and now. Yeah. And uh, it's only dinosaurs like me that are slow to sort of accept it. As you can see, the weather is not great. And obviously the issue is that we don't want the charger getting wet. We're going to keep going in and out, in and out. And John's put an umbrella just over there. So hopefully it'll be all right. I should probably stress that the chargers are perfectly okay to be in the rain when the cover's on. It's just when the cover's off that it's not ideal. What EV are you going to get then? I've been looking at um, the new Leaf. Okay, yes. And some of the Renault range I quite like. Yes. Um, might even upgrade to a Mercedes, but we'll yeah. see. There's okay. plenty of choice out there, as you know. There is. It needs to be a smallish EV, but it still needs to be an SUV type of mm. car. It's just my wife and I, so we don't need a big car to, you know, for luggage and carrying other people around. Yeah. Um, but at the moment, undecided getting on in life and years. So just a small little run around will do. So these can be single or three phase, right? Yeah, so if you, most people have got a single phase electrical supply at their property, most people. Um, on their rare occasion when people have got three phase, so quite commercial properties, farms, large houses, you can have a three phase charger which will charge up to 22 kilowatts. And it's a very similar installation. There's just more wires. I'm just going to put a cover over that just for a few minutes in order to keep everything dry while I do a little test on the cable. Okay. So there's uh, two tests I want to do on the cable. One's called continuity. And what that tends to do is it lets the um, it lets you know that the cables, particularly the earth, is continuous all the way through with no disruptions, like there isn't a break in the cable. Okay. And then the other one is called insulation resistance, which tests to make sure that the insulation, which is around the actual copper conductor, is also continuous the whole way and hasn't got any breaks in it. So the cables, the copper cables, aren't actually touching each other. Right, okay. And I've done those, and they're good. It is a solid thing, isn't it? Because that's all, that's all metal, isn't it? Right? Yeah, it's made of metal. It's um, not like a horrible plasticky one that most people might do yeah most charge points let's be honest are a bit on the ugly side but anderson have made a name for themselves by making charge points that people actually want to display proudly on the front of their house and there's loads of color choice options for the unit as well as the front panel uh, including the these metal colors but also carbon fiber or wooden ones the quartz is anderson's most compact charge point and it supports seven kilowatts or three phase 22 kilowatts. You can have it untethered or tethered with a pretty long cable. So John has gone for the 8.5 meter cable, which is fantastic really. So this little button there that I saw you press, is that to pair yes. it up? Yes, yeah, so that little button is kind of like a setup button. And I, in order to get it into setup mode, I just have to press the button three times and you find it's pulsate flashing blue when it's in setup mode. And then I press it once and it'll come back out of setup mode. Yeah, okay. So I've just got this, uh, it's what's called an EV simulator or an EV adapter. And it just simulates the car. So I can plug the connector from the charger into this and put it into charge mode, which will get us a nice light on showing that the charger's working. And then this is wired into my tester and I can do a couple of tests with it. I can test the voltage 
I can look at the air fault loop impedance and I can test the RCD as well. So the RCBO I installed this morning, I can now make sure that that trips and make sure it trips within the allotted amount of time it's supposed to trip. It's supposed to trip within 300 milliseconds and it tripped with 26.9, so perfect. Right, okay. So that's all good. Now cool. I can turn the charger back on because that's tripped it so the charger's off. I'll turn it back on and I can plug my vehicle in to test it on a vehicle. The last thing I've got to do is put the hook on the wall okay. and set your app up. Or even maybe a little bit further left. Yeah about there. Why did you go for a tethered unit? I just felt that if on a day like today I pull up, it's raining, I've got to open the car, get the charging lead out and all that goes with that, whereas now I've just got to get out the car, grab the lead and plug it in. Yeah. It's a little thing, but it's a little thing that could become a big thing and I could regret not having had a tethered connection, so that's why. Oh, good move. I regret not getting a tethered one. Actually. You haven't got no, no, no dear. Well, the, the reason I didn't was because we had a Nissan Leaf at the time, right. and that's a, that was a different connector. So I had to, I had to have two leads, one for my e Nero and one for the Leaf. Yeah. Uh, now we don't have the Leaf anymore, so right. a tethered would make more sense for us. Okay. Yeah. So what we want to do is click connect charge point, allow camera access, click scan. It'll open up your camera, and then we want to scan this QR code here. And all we've got to do is that. So I'm going to show you what the charger's doing now. Right. So this is the Anderson app and it's all pretty easy to use. Currently we've stopped charging, but if we want to start again, we can just go to charge now. We're charging here. It'll tell you how much energy we've used, the duration and the cost. You've got lock charge point if you want to lock it. So when you go away, you don't want anyone else using your charger. Down here we've got statistics and that tells you how much you've used over a day week month or year and you can export that as well if you want to if you, if you love your data um, you can set up schedules so if you have cheap electricity during the night you can change that here and uh, so that's all good and we've got settings here and you can do, you've got app updates tutorial help center all that sort of stuff but that's it really not much to it pretty simple Something fantastic about these is you can see it looks very hard wearing, but also it's got a seven year warranty, which is pretty amazing actually. Um, I had a quick look last night and I couldn't find any other charge point that has such a good warranty as standard. Now the other great thing about this is that it does have compatibility with solar panels, which is a lovely thought right now while I'm standing in the rain, but anyway, it does. So if you've got solar panels, then this can just charge when you've got excess solar, if that works for you, because actually, if you've got a good export tariff, then it might not make any sense to charge from the solar, but anyway, it's there as an option. This has support for smart tariffs like Octopus Intelligent Go, which is a fantastic tariff. And it means that your car charges at seven pence per kilowatt hour, not just during the night, but also during the day, if it's particularly windy then uh, you'll find that you get cheap electricity during the day as well if your car's plugged in. So it's a fantastic tariff. Are you happy with it? Uh, yes, I am, yeah. yeah uh, the installation, good. Darren did a very good job in terrible weather conditions, um, kept me um, informed of what he was doing through a tutorial. And if I do find any problems, ring the company and they'll um, help me out. Yeah, and you're happy with the look of it? Absolutely. Yeah. So it's all done, it's installed and it's charging. Well, thank okay. you very much, John. Well, you're more than welcome. Thank you very much for watching this video. And sorry, I look like a drowned rat. Please press the subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified of other videos. And I'll be back very soon. Hopefully in the dry. Bye for now.